I wanted to talk about a big deer blind setup and you know Dylan and I, Joe, Kevin, uh, Wes in the future when we go to client properties one of the biggest things Dylan I don't know how you feel but we have these giant blinds that are set up on client properties and they're a lot of work this one you could see this was excavator work rocks stones it's it's tough and the positioning is tough with it but there's a lot of effort that goes into it some of them are sunken and cemented telephone poles and i hate telling clients i mean there's and the thing is they know before we get there they say oh we got a deer blind you're probably not going to like because they know how important it is to access and not spook deer when you go out and hunt and typically Dylan, most of the time when you have a blind that is in a bad spot, would you say typically it's on a food plot or, yeah, almost, or close? Almost all the time. Yeah, yeah, and there's a lot of times where, you know, I'll suggest moving a blind and it might only be moving the blind 60 yards or so. Definitely. And clients are like, really, you're going to make me move that blind 60 <laughs> yards? Like, well, if you want to access this and hunt it, that's what you got to do. It is something that's a, it's a black and white. I mean, we, if we were setting up our own property, we could never, ever set up those blinds in the middle of a food plot where we're spoken deer. So yeah, food plot is a big one. But hey, these blinds are fun to hunt out of. And a lot of us have families. Uh, we have Jackson, he's 15 months old. I have older kids too. We have friends we like to sit with. And so the blinds are fun, but they're a big investment. It doesn't matter if you're going to the store. I remember back in the day in the UP of Michigan, I built one that was four by six, had uh, 30 year architectural sh shingles. It was uh, treated had outdoor carpeting on the inside. It was beautiful, insulated. And uh, I wanna say just materials, I had $1,100 into it. Just materials and I had to do all the work, ladder, uh, stairway to get in. And, uh, and so it can be very expensive even if you go cheap and do it yourself. And so let alone buying a beautiful redneck like this one behind us. The bottom line is, is I wanna see you get the most out of your blinds. And so a lot of times we go to a client property, they're asking us, okay, I want some tree stand recommendations, but I, I wanna get some nice rednecks, I wanna get a nice blind, I wanna build a nice blind, where would you put it? And so we're always thinking about that. This is a typical spot I would like to see more clients put one. And we have, some, we have a few that, I'm not saying you don't put them by a food plot, but we have a lot like where Tyler shot his buck last year. Dante was filming. We have a bow shot nearby at the water hole and then we can shoot out across the food plot. The food plot doesn't even start for 60, 60 or 70 yards. It's fully encased in brush between the blind and the food plot. We can get up and down the steps without spooking deer when we go to that blind. So really cool setup. And that's kind of how I like, every time I'm setting up one of these nice blinds, making recommendations for clients, I want to see them get multi-use out of it. And this is a multi-use location right here. And I'm going to go through a few of the steps that I would really like to point out where we thought about this a lot. For one, we're not sticking it in the middle of the deer movement. Because of elevation change right here, and it might be a thick line of cover that you have, it might be an inside corner of a field where you're right in that axis of movement in the corner of a field, you're tucking the, the blind off the side. For one, I always like sticking the blind back in timber somewhere. You want vertical timber around it. It's crazy how you get a blind back in vertical timber where you have big logs around it going up to the sky, 70, 80 feet in the air. It's crazy how you don't get that far away and that blind just disappears into the woods. When it's out on the edge of a field, it's silhouette, it sticks out. And boy, you know, deer look at a, a trail cam box on a tree they'll notice during daylight. How many of you had a mature buck? Look at that, back up, get out of the way. And so for one, this blind right here, we have some giant timber, shag bar kickery, oak, oak. We have some really good trees around it that helps blend this in. Now we also have a brush line right in front of it that we shoot over to get down to where the deer movement is. We have big vertical timber behind us too. So we have a lot of vertical timber. Some of the biggest trees are right next to the blind so that we can further hide that. In fact, when deer look at this from the approach over here, directly behind me and look up, you can't even hardly see the blind right now for us and we know it's there. So it really hides to deer, just blends into the surrounding. You might not think so, but it's so different than putting it right out in the open. Now, another thing down here, we're looking at a bench. That's that natural deer movement. We can hardly see the water hole until we actually get down to about this point right here, but we can just cut right down to the stairway, get up, and we're really hidden until we get in the blind, look out the window. So really good entrance exit, even to get into the blind, you have the vertical timber. And then we're looking at the deer movement down there. We're not sticking this in the middle. We have great open timber up here. So all are downwind. When the wind is going up into this area, we can hunt. In fact, because of the hill system, 
And this way I teach in the Hills and Thermals web class is that when the, when the winds come over the top over here in the morning, they circle right back uphill. So we can hunt with morning winds going this way towards the water hole down below. We can hunt with morning winds going this way, and then we can hunt with evening winds going this way. So we can hunt this with a lot of winds, and that's one of the things I like to see too. So your approach, big timber around it, we're watching the defined movement down there. We have several different wind advantages in a location like this, good winds. And then this bench system right down here, it's already a great deer movement. It's a bench system. We have a ditch right over there. There's a crossing there. That crossing matches up with this bench. This bench continues this way and it goes out to the corner of our major switchgrass pollinator blend food plot system that is about 250 yards away. So very, very defined movement. There's a purpose for deer to move through here. It's not just a random spot in the woods. That's why we then added the water hole. The water hole is sweetening the movement, not making the movement. It's not, it's complementing the movement. That means it creates an even stronger movement. It pinpoints movement, precision movement. We can add the mock scrape down there, put a camera on it and see what comes through. So we have good access in and out through open timber where you don't expect deer. We're walking to the edge of movement, not through the edge of movement. You know, through the edge of movement is no different than putting a giant blind out in the middle of the food plot. We're not doing that. We're walking to the edge of the movement. We have good access in and out. We're using the lay of the land to hide our movement. We're using big trees to hide the blind. And then we're adding a water hole down there for a bow shot. That water hole is only about 23 yards away. So we're setting up that bow shot, but this is also because of the lay of the land and the movement through here, it's a great gun stand. So now I can get use bow stand, just like where Tyler shot his buck last year. Great stand, we've shot bucks with a gun, bucks with a bow out of that stand. We wanna do the same here. So we can pop right into this blind, have a great view for gun season, and then, oh, by the way, we can hunt it all season long with a bow right over the water hole. So this is a perfect, type of setup for a big blind. Again, the opposite and what we cringe at when we go out to a client property is to see that big blind, very visible, right out on the edge of a food plot or, or on a food plot. We go through great pains. A lot of our blinds have, we use big rock trees, we put hybrid poplars, hybrid willows, silky willows around the blind. We have switchgrass layers around the blind. We tuck them back in the timber or on the edge of the timber so they're not silhouetted. They're on the top of a shrub, not 10 feet above the shrub where they stick out like a sore thumb. They look like part of the shrub going up. So a lot of times you notice once you hide these in with big timber, some shrubs, some trees, your axis is good, it's off of the movement. Deer really just don't pay attention to them. And that's the case we found here. We had deer hitting the water hole down here over and over again. And then we add the blind here. And within several days, they're hitting the water hole over and over again. Now it helps there's a big drought right now. We just got some rain in the last uh, 48 hours, which has been incredible. The bottom line is this big old blind, it's a six by eight red neck. You see the two tier stairway, it's fancy. It's the only one that we have out here on the property in Wisconsin or Minnesota. We can't wait to hunt it. We can't wait to hunt it with a family. It's close to the house. I can bring a friend down here. We can just sit for a couple hours. More of a social spot for us. Heck, we probably will shoot some podcasts out of here we thought about. But bottom line is, it's a big, beautiful blind and we want to get the most out of it. But at the same time, we can't put it in a spot where we're ruining not only the hunt, but the land. Because if you have a bad blind spot, it doesn't just affect... 50 or 100 yards away, it affects hundreds of yards away because the deer get used to, they can't walk in front of that blind deer in the daylight without hunting pressure being there or the potential of hunting pressure being there. And when that happens, deer don't go by there during the daylight. Maybe does do, maybe fawns, but certainly not that older buck in the neighborhood. And you want to always look at that lowest hole in the bucket. You don't want to have spots where you say, okay, on this part of the property, we're going to just have fun. We'll just go out anytime we want and we'll put a blind out in the middle of food plot over there on the 100 acres. That, that side over there will be where it's more strategic hunting. No, what happens on this side affects that side too. So you really want to make sure your, all your setups are covering the lowest hole in the bucket. And that's really hunting pressure management. Can you see a mature buck using this spot or not? Because if you can't, make some changes. And I hope some of these changes help you out for the great investment that a big blind is and the years of enjoyment that you can have from buying a big, beautiful blind that's well-constructed, well-made, and something that you can enjoy, enjoy a lifetime.
Hey folks, I really appreciate you watching and I want to invite you to check out our main website, whitetailhabitatsolutions.com. I'm going to miss all these, but we have seed to offer, hats, articles, web classes, books, consultations, and even a new podcast. I think we have 17 podcasts out there right now for you to listen to. So we have a lot to offer. Most of all, if you don't want to buy anything, I'm going to keep offering free videos, free articles. We have over 600 articles on the site. And uh, most of all, thank you very much for watching, reading, listening, being a part of White to Habitat Solutions. If you want to check this stuff out, awesome. Links are in the description.